Listen up, fellas. Welcome to a 1v1 on Crossing in the Woods. I forgot to turn on music. Oops. This game's between Polak and Eldad, in all caps. Polak's going to be playing as U.S. forces in the south base, Eldad playing as Overcommando West in the north. We have a rear echelon troop start from Polak, following up immediately with a squad of riflemen when folks grenadiers right start from Eldad. And he's already selected his doctrine, he's going to be going with breakthrough tactics. Rifle squad ready for action. Both rear echelon troops being rear echelon troop squads being sent to the left side grabbing the uh, strategic points first. Folks grenadiers grabbing the immune, uh, strategic point there, another strategic point there before moving over to grab the ammunitions. Folks grenadiers moving up towards the middle to grab the victory point. There's already an engagement happening at the river. Those Rishlam troops have to retreat immediately. He's about to attempt to cross, uh, <laughs> which would have been very costly for him, but he noticed just in time. Riflemen grabbing the strategic point over here on the right side, using riflemen to back cap can be a bit of a waste of their early game value. Generally, you want your rifleman to be present for the first engagement rather than just rear echelon troops, but unfortunately, he kind of, though his current capping order is going to result in his rear echelon troops being in a lot of early engagements and his rifleman just kind of idly capping. Listen up. Here's the deal. Kuba wagon being produced. We get chewed up here. Snipping around our asses. Tactical point being captured. Folks, grenadiers will be able to take the cutoff for echelon troops. Not successful in holding the left side since he did not opt to utilize volley fire. Meanwhile, riflemen will uh, easily be able to push away these folks, grenadiers. But a Kuba wagon is on the way to support. So it's going to depend on how well he can push that Kuba wagon away with these supporting infantry squads. He does have a rifleman squad in position here in the center, although I don't know what they're doing. I think he was uh, moving them uh, behind this shot blocker so the Kuba wagon would not be able to fire on them. So the Kuba wagon switched to fire on this flanking rifle squad, and that these riflemen should be able to take the fuel. They need to get back into the capture circle, and we also have a cutoff maneuver here by these rear echelon troops here uh, at the U.S. Forces base. These riflemen have a huge advantage over those folks grenadiers, which are forced to immediately retreat because they were so out of position for that engagement. The rear echelon troops continue to work on the cutoff point. Uh, the Kuba wagon fires on those riflemen. The riflemen in green cover are actually taking heavy damage, but the Kuba wagon will be forced away by that flanking squad, so the right side fuel will fall to the American. We also have more riflemen on their way out to the left side to capture that strategic point. And if we take a look at... Tech. Polak has 60 fuel, but still no lieutenant purchase, so he may be holding on for captain. If not, then he's just been a little bit too busy microwing his units to tech up, and he's falling really behind on that. Ooh! Rear echelon troops take out that Kuba wagon in the base, despite being fired on by the base guns. Nice play by those rear echelon troops. Taking out that Kuba wagon at range. Rifleman moving up on the left side. I'm not sure they can win this, though. They have to cross red cover to engage those uh, Sturm Pioneers. They should be able to win at range, though. So the Sturm Pioneers will reposition to a better uh, better spot. Meanwhile, a lot of reinforcement happening here in the USF base, and it looks like he has gone loot er, yeah, he has gone lieutenant in addition to a fourth rifle squad. So he doesn't really need an M20 to deal with the Kubel wagon. He's kind of opened up his options a little bit in that regard. He could just go straight for the AA half track, or he what could knock at any light vehicles and just rush out to Sherman. Taking out, uh, taking out the Kubel wagon without utilizing an M20 gives you that freedom. Riflemen over here on the left side will probably lose this.
They do drop one of the Stern Pyo models quite quickly. Another one goes down really quickly. I think that the Rifleman will win this, actually. Uh, I don't know. Okay, second Rifle Squad will definitely secure that victory for him. All right, you dopes, listen up. Rifleman easily be able to win against those Folks Grenadiers. Rear echelon troops grabbing the munitions there on the left side. Folks Grenadiers grabbing that stuff over there on the right. Nice harassment by Eldad to take that territory. But it is costing him a bit of manpower bleed since he can't win engagements. We do have a battle group headquarters being constructed by him, as well as Panzer Fusiliers being fielded. Two squads, in fact. So he will be making heavy use of that breakthrough doctrine. And, uh,. Polak will be making a cutoff maneuver for that strategic point in the north yet again. Oh no! Ooh, nice grenade by Eldad, but fortunately it was just just barely out of position. But it doesn't matter, the lieutenant gets wiped anyway. Oh, I did not react in time to that. That is a heavy loss. Another grenade goes off on those riflemen, but they are retreating. That being said, that's a lot of munitions being spent by Eldad on anti-infantry stuff. He's threw two grenades just now, and he has purchased G43s, leaving him no munitions for Panzer Shreks, and he has no raquette nor for either. Polak is not producing any vehicles yet. However, he obviously intends to as he's produced a fuel cache. We're losing a cap he's now got the got uh, fuel off. for a major. If that's what he's thinking of doing. Area is ours. And he's going to be in control of both fuel points soon. Or no, I actually take that back. He's going to lose the left side while taking the right side. Major being produced, and again, Eldad has almost no anti-tank at all, and he's actually going with a mechanized regiment headquarters now. The enemy is overrunning one of our capture points. I'm not sure what he's thinking with this purchase. He could have gotten tier four, but he chose not to. Maybe he's going to grab a Puma or anti-tank, but it's going to arrive quite late, possibly after the Sherman. Well, no, it'll get here before the Sherman, but still. He's not going to be take be able to take advantage of it for nearly as long as if he had rushed it. The battalion just released a major for action. Rifleman taking heavy damage from those Stern Pioneers. <laughs> they both retreat simultaneously. Although the Stern Pioneers would have won, I think, if they had stuck around. Meanwhile, this engagement's not going very well for these guys. Oh no, this grenade could be devastating! Okay. I'm really glad that he paid attention to that engagement before something horrible happened. Folks Grenadiers look like they're going to win this, and the Riflemen will make a retreat. Meanwhile, over here, more capturing happening by Eldad. That being said, Polak is quite close to his Sherman, only about, at this rate, two minutes away from being able to call it in, so it's going to be about, an, about a 12-minute Sherman. Meanwhile, Eldad has not spent any of his fuel. I'm almost wondering if he's going to get a... Why doesn't this work? There, I'm almost wondering if he's going to get a Stuka. 
Koopa back to full strength. He could afford one of these two things if he were going to get it. Unless he's rushing a KT. Which he might be. Because he's activating fuel transfer, purchase this, this, and then, then he'll get... I don't... I'm not sure. I'm not sure what he's planning. Rifleman force away the Folks Grenadiers there on the left side. Listen up, fellas. We got a zero D! Enemy routes! Keep your heads down! Maneuver and fire! Maneuver and fire! They're moving out! Cannon. The supply hub cannon is ready for orders. The enemy is reduced to 300 points. Keep shooting! Steady up, fellas. I got orders coming. Not going well for Polak though, he's really struggling to keep up with the uh, the extra anti-infantry that his opponent has in the form of the two Panzer Fusilier squads giving them that extra amount of map harassment and control. It looks like he's going to get forced away from the fuel on the left as well, leaving him with no fuel points and really slowing his fuel income. He does get it captured before he's forced to retreat though, which is going to bring him up to 26 and that'll bump him over the 110 mark for his Sherman before it can get decapped. So. Looks like he was able to hold on to territory just long enough to get his armor out. Meanwhile, Eldad has spent some fuel on Tier 4, so he has all three tech structures now before he's purchased any vehicles. And, um, I think he might be rushing a King Tiger. <laughs> I'm honestly not sure. He does have one Panzer Shrek now, but that's not much, and he has no munitions. I think that sh the, the sh this coming Sherman could be could be devastating. Battle promotion. Only one Panzer Shrek, still no Rakenwerfer, still nothing. Polak has also not chosen a Doctrine yet. He's got access to Rifle, Recon, and Airborne. Recon would be a great choice. He has 370 munitions in the bank. He could start uh, throwing canister rounds out on these uh, side engagements. He could drop Pathfinder artillery on this thing. He could do it twice, in fact, with his current munition stockpile and destroy it. Which would prevent his opponent from getting any Oversoldaten. So I would definitely think, I would definitely support uh, Recon in a situation with a huge munition stockpile like that. Airborne, of course, always a solid decision as well, but it seems a little bit late to pick Airborne. He could have gotten a bunch of paratroopers by now. Sherman, ready to go. Sherman has hit the field as well as his ambulance. Sherman's upgrading with the machine gun. Makes a pretty good entrance, forcing a retreat from two squads on the left side. Gets one kill with the high explosive rounds. Ambulance is healing up the infantry blob. Oh, that was a surprisingly good shoe mine on that rifleman squad. Taking out four models. Ouch. No wonder he doesn't have any munitions if he's planting mines. We've dropped to 200 points. I can't believe Polak isn't making more use of this Sherman. He's really l losing out on the shock value that it has. His opponent is now going to prepare for it, throwing a Raketten Warfer onto the field, and probably going to start saving for more Panzer Shreks. He's up to 115 fuel now as well with the fuel transfer still active, I think. Refugees are going to lose that. I think the Sherman is being mobilized to support them, but there are now Obersoldaten on the field, counter harassing these rear echelon troops. Some paratroopers have been dropped to support these riflemen, but I don't think that they can win against these superior numbers on the across this river since they lose out of range and attempting to close the distance will be 
will definitely lose him that engagement. Meanwhile, the Sherman over here on the right side got a nice shot off on those folks for ears, but he doesn't chase on the retreat, so he won't be able to wipe the squad. He has to move the Sherman back over to the left side to support against these Obersoldaten. He's gonna take a shot at these folks for ears, though, I think. Grenade going out, oh no! Okay, nice dodge. Very nice dodge. Sherman finds the Oversoul Dutton. Nice opening shot, taking out two models. The Raketan Warfare hasn't been positioned very well for this. And Sherman gets quite a few shots off on... Oh well. Somewhat unpunished. And these Riflemen on the flank will probably be able to take on almost all of this stuff. Maybe. A little bit slow to drop the models on those Sturm Pioneers, unfortunately. There they go. Meanwhile, these... Oh, those paratroopers have LMGs moving up. Nice grenade low. Oh, wipes the rifle squad. He just wasn't paying attention. Oh, no. This is the second squad wipe. His lieutenant now in a rifle squad. I don't think he's... I don't think Eldad has lost any full squads by comparison. And I think Polak's going to struggle to keep up if he keeps letting that happen. That being said, he does have a Sherman, and his opponent has very little AT, although he now has a second Raketenwerfer. Polak will have the fuel for a second Sherman soon. Eldad, on the other hand, going to have the fuel for a Panther very soon, if he chooses to get one. Again, having fuel transfer on this whole time leaves him with no munitions at all. So he will really struggle to take on armor until his panther arrives, if that's what he's going for. The squad is back to full strength. Rear echelon troops grabbing the munitions on the right. Riflemen about to get forced away by a pretty uh, sizable overcommand of a blob. And there's not really anything defending the left for the American right now. Sherman has been repaired and is on its way back to the front lines. This force of infantry should be sufficient to, uh, to defend the left as well. Looks like those riflemen should be able to get away since the Obersoldaten are not being utilized to try and wipe them on the retreat. Sherman is being used so conservatively. He needs to get that thing in there while he still has the advantage. A capture point is being overrun. He's not at all punishing his opponent for keeping fuel transfer on like that. The enemy is overrunning one of our capture points. Ooh, that Major just walked right into a Schreyer Panzer headquarters, and it looks like the Panther is finally hitting the field. Sherman ready to go. What the hell am I meant to do with these? Polak is getting a Jackson, which is definitely a good call. He's going to need it to be able to take on that Panther. Having lost a full rifle squad and his lieutenant is putting him really behind. He's having, he's having a lot of trouble competing with his opponent's infantry. Especially since he has 350 munitions stockpiled, he hasn't purchased any, uh, any BARs. In fact, he has none of the base upgrades. Paratroopers hitting the field. The Panther has also hit the field. 
is engaging some riflemen. AT grenade bounces off the Panther. Folks are in air is forced away. Oversold out and dealing massive damage to those riflemen. They're going to be forced to retreat soon. There they go. There's a Rakettenwerfer on the field to support the Panther as well against this Jackson. Panther rounds the corner. Jackson firing. Nice damage against that Panther there. May attempt to chase. Ooh, nice AT grenade going off on those riflemen, putting the, another penetrating shot from the Jackson. Jackson has to pull back away from the Rakettenwerfer. And he can't quite risk one more shot. Maybe he'll attack ground. No. Meanwhile, those overslow down and tearing those riflemen to shreds, but HE round could be devastating. Ooh, that was not an HE round, that was an AP round. If it had been HE round, an HE round, who knows what might have happened. Oh no, those paratroopers leave their cover position and run up into these G43s. He's definitely going to lose that engagement. What is he doing? What is he doing? He wasn't paying any attention to that. Just took a ton of casualties for no reason. Sherman has been repaired and making its way over to the left side. Lots of healing needs to happen here. I'm surprised that the Major hasn't set up a forward retreat point somewhere in this general area. One casualty inflicted by the HE rounds. I get away pretty much clean. Meanwhile, over here, demo charge is going on the house, but uh, Aldad evacuates the building before that can go off. Bears are going up on that Panther. Unfortunately, the Sturm Pioneers are busy capturing, so they can't be used to repair. Echelon troops leading the charge, soaking up the damage for the riflemen. The Stern Pioneers are in red cover. Oh, well, at least that one was. It looks like the riflemen aren't going to be able to win this, though. The Folks Grenadiers supporting from the back. Going to be too much for them to take on. And that force is forced to retreat. These Echelon troops, however, are harassing the fuel. Paratroopers on the right side harassing the fuel. Sherman is moving up as well. Again, I think he's just being way too timid with his Sherman. Although he does know that there is a uh, Panther on the field. As long as he keeps his Jackson nearby to support, he should be okay. Wait, what? Where? I think he lost. Oh, he lost his rear echelons over here to a grenade. I think. Both for Ken Warfers are over here on the left side. So he may be able to win against that Panther. He just called in a P-47 on that Panther. Uh, the initial two strikes don't really do much though. There goes that one. And then tank rifle grenade goes off on the Sherman. And he had AT or AP rounds equipped once again. In anticipation of taking on that Panther. He probably should have waited for that Panther to fall a lot lower before he called in the P-47 strike. He didn't really get a very good return on investment, although it's actually entering the strike zone again. One of the P-47s has not yet been shot down. Meanwhile, on the left side, it looks like he's won the engagement. Rifleman taking the uh, a victory point. Rear echelon troops grabbing, or no, Major grabbing the fuel. He's not utilizing his Major as a forward retreat point, even though he has an ambulance on the field for some reason. Jackson gets a nice shot off on that Panther. Panther's not able to retaliate because of a vision blocker. I think these riflemen should be able to win this. There's not really anything in range to support. A lot of infantry is heading towards the middle, though. So these riflemen will be forced to retreat soon. Major's just kind of standing over there. Although it looks like Eldad's infantry is going straight for the American cutoff. Having control of both of the fuels, uh, uh, Polak now has 36 fuel coming in. Should be able to start fielding armor quite rapidly. 
probably thinking of getting a second Jackson now. We're losing a capture point. Paratroopers ready for action. E-47 air support now available. We just lost a unit. Our supply line is cut. Drones Sherman taking heavy board. damage. The Kenworthers are actually moving up to support in this engagement. Nice flank by the Jackson on that Panther, but the Rakenworfers are set up. But they fire the Sherman. I'm not sure if this Panther will survive the next shot. No, it does not. It goes down. Smoke uh, smoke barrage being deployed onto those Rakenworfers. They may attempt to attack ground to finish them off, but it looks like they may be able to get to safety. I don't know why he continues to have uh, AP rounds equipped on that Sherman, though. Oh. That was a weird maneuver, I'm not sure what he was thinking there. The Panther has been taken out. He only traded for one Sherman, not really a trade he could afford to make. It's going to be a while before his King Tiger arrives, so he just purchases another Panther. He can't afford to wait. And he continues to leave fuel transfer on this entire time. Just can't afford any upgrades at all. Especially not when he's been throwing grenades. We're losing a capture point. They know we're here that being now. said, the American is really falling behind for territory. Paratroopers ready for action. What the hell am I meant to do with these recruits? Green is green. Can we're on the hawk over here! Grab your shit. is under attack. <clears throat> under fire! Fire! Paratroopers engaging some stern pioneers. Should be able to force them away. They're standing in red cover. The G43s have moved up to support as well. Meanwhile, the Sherman has been repaired. Healing happening here in the base as well. So this infantry should be available to push soon. And another Sherman is on its way. And now that is actually starting to float quite a bit of manpower. But I'm not sure what he should get. Probably another squad of Oversold on me. Oversold on being forced away. Major also being forced away. That Raken Warfare will probably be forced to retreat over here as well. The new Panther is making its way towards this cutoff. While Polak probes the right side with his tanks. Panther reverses right into that rifle squad, but they're not firing the anti-tank rifle grenade. It looks like they're trying to get in position to do so. There it goes. No machine gun upgrade on this Panther because he doesn't have the munitions to do it with fuel transfer on this entire time. Ooh, nasty grenade there, but the full squad of Folks Grenadiers does get wiped. Fortunately, it was not the uh, Panzer Shrek squad. They do get their anti-tank rifle grenade off, but it phases out of reality. I'm pretty sure that will always happen if it gets beyond a certain range, which is really kind of annoying thing about that ability. Jackson is going in hard on that Panther, utilizing the armor-piercing rounds to great effect. Next shot could do it. There it goes. And the Panther is destroyed by a lone Jackson once again. The combination of the AT of the engine damage and the Jackson more than enough to get the job done. And uh, Pollock has actually had quite a bit of luck though with all of his all of his shots penetrating on the frontal armor of those Panthers. Luckier before than this time. Ooh, double smoke barrage going off on that Raken Warfare. That was kind of a waste of munitions. I don't think that was a little bit overzealous use of that smoke. That being said, Merrick, despite being able to successfully take out that Panther, the American is running rapidly out of time. Only 70 points remaining. He really needs to start getting some territory under control. He's trading really well 
against his opponent's tanks. Wait, what was that? Oh, his ambulance just got taken out. He's trading really effectively against his opponent's tanks with his Shermans. But if he doesn't get the map back under control, it's not going to matter. Oh, so much for that squad, though. That, those Volksrangers just got obliterated. As is that Rakenwerfer. And now Eldad is starting to really fall behind. That wasn't really RNG. That was two, I mean, two Shermans shooting at you for an extended period of time. He had ample time to retreat. I don't really think you can blame RNG for the fact that that just happened. Definitely should have retreated a long time ago. We lost an infantry unit. They got wiped out. Something just died. Steady up, men. Somewhere. I think it was a rear echelon troop squad because he has no rear echelons left. Yeah. 41 points remaining. Polak really, really needs to get some VPs under his control right now and not lose them. Twenty-five points remaining. Right side victory point getting taken by paratroopers with their under Obersoldaten and Panzer Fusilier fire. They really need support. And a uh, Sherman is on its way. The center point is going to get taken by these riflemen. It looks like they are unopposed. I really can't believe that these fusiliers aren't trying to counter that right now, but they're just going for the cutoff instead. When they should be trying to finish out the game. Riflemen making a push for the victory point now. Sherman. Firing on those fusiliers, forcing them to back away. And Eldad is about 10 fuel from his next Panther, which will probably bring in 10 points remaining, though. And the two Shermans over here should be more than enough to wipe out everything in this area. Smoke is being deployed. Those Rakenwerfers are getting way too aggressive. What is he thinking? They're gonna both get wiped. I don't know what those Obersoldaten are doing either. He's just throwing all of his units away. Oh no, he just gave an MG-34 to his opponent. And he has made no push for the center VP with all of this infantry over here. And his window of opportunity to win this game is closing because he keeps losing full squads that he can't afford to lose. Now he's a little too late to harass the center. The Shermans have been moved up to support and two full paratrooper squads are there as well. He might even lose that full squad. But it does make it away just barely in time. And Eldad is not purchasing another panther, so it looks like he's going to get a king tiger. But I think he could probably deactivate fuel transfer now. Big Blob making a final push for the middle. Looks like he wants to try and end the game now, but again, with the Shermans on the field, it's just not happening doesn't have any proper anti-tank in this area. It's just one Rakettenwerfer. Nice grenade by those paratroopers forces that squad to retreat. This squad taking massive damage from the HE rounds. It does make it away just barely. AT grenade goes off from the Panzer Fusiliers, but they also have to retreat. Polak really needs to prevent this from happening, though. Really can't afford to pull away with the Shermans right now. He needs to prevent this point from being captured. He does have paratroopers on the way. I think he might be able to get that decaptured in time, but he should have used his Sherman to prevent this from happening in the first place, or at least harass this left side, which is completely undefended. His Major is moving up into the capture circle. The Rakenwerfer just retreated, but I think he honestly... I think if he had just let that Rakenwerfer just... If he had just, like, moved it around in the circle until it was dead, he might have won the game right there. In fact, I, I think that's... I don't know, I'm not sure. He might have just thrown it away for nothing. Three points. 
the, it would probably be down to like one point or the game would be over if he had just let that Raketan Warfer just die. I think that might have been a mistake on Eldad's part to retreat that so prematurely. That being said, he still has a late game advantage. His Panther, his fr his newest Panther, hopefully will do better than his his last two. But it's so important to support your Panther with Shreks, and he has none because his Shrek squad died. And he gave the Panzer Shrek to his opponent, and an opponent with a Vet two Jackson and a Panzer Shrek and two Shermans is pretty hard to take on with just a Panther and some Obers and Fusiliers and stuff. So. He is in a nasty position. He really just needs to get... He just needs to take two victory points and just hold them for one, like, uh, just for... Just a few seconds. But his ability to do so is... Wavering. Jackson fires on the Panther. Panther is firing on uh, paratroopers. It's not quite in range to, to counter... Counter on that Jackson. It is wiping a few models, however, but it's just giving that Jackson more and more veterancy. Just so much damage on that Panther, it's already going to be forced away. Meanwhile, that Raken Warfer is committing suicide on these paratroopers, and that was a nasty grenade on all of the Fusiliers! Taking out, like, six models, I think. Ouch. Sherman moving up to help put the nail in the coffin. Meanwhile, any attempt to take the left side victory point will probably fail in the face of all of those paratroopers. There's also an MG-34 armed rifleman on the right side, so these stern pioneers will have no chance of taking that right side VP. I cannot believe he hasn't set up a forward retreat point with his major, though. Could have easily done so. He could easily do so right now. Although now that the Major has Sprint, he can capture territory rather quickly with him. So it looks like that's what he's going to opt to do. Those paratroopers will retreat. These paratroopers have to move up into a defensive position behind some green cover here. The Panther is getting repaired. As well as some reinforcement from these infantry. Eldad now has 200 points remaining. Polak has a long road ahead of him to win this game. He can't afford to make even a single mistake. And once Eldad's next heavy tank arrives, things could get very dicey depending on what it is. I'm honestly surprised he got another Panther when he had the fuel for a King Tiger. Just got a report of an infantry unit being wiped out. What happened? What just happened? Oh, his Major hit a mine. <laughs> his Major hit a mine and got wiped. Those paratroopers are gonna have to retreat. If they don't retreat right now, he might lose this Vet 3 squad. They do make it across the river, and the Sherman arrives to screen. Ooh, nice shot from the Sherman there. Jackson is moving up to support against that Panther. Gets a nice shot off on its rear armor, dealing pretty respectable damage. Sherman doing heavy damage to those infantry with its HE shells. And I don't know what that Panther is thinking right now. It's going so deep. It fires on the Sherman when it needs to fire on that Jackson. Oh, with the Jackson shot bounces, and it looks like those Panzer Fusiliers do manage to damage that Jackson's engine. The Panther is trying to finish off the Sherman, but it gets out of range, and the Panther has to pull back for repairs. Meanwhile, riflemen continue to maintain their hold on the right side. These Vet 3 paratroopers should be able to hold this victory point, although standing so clumped like that is so dangerous. He doesn't want to get forced away just by a grenade. He should probably spread, him, spread himself out in this yellow cover. His, oh, and his opponent actually just immediately retreats. Fuel transfer still active. Making his ability to utilize grenades, or just upgrades, non-existent. But allowing him at least to keep up with pan with his panther production. But he's just not utilizing those panthers very effectively and not supporting them very well in this Jackson. A single Jackson has been enough to take on three panthers this game, which is amazing. Those Overslip Dotten are going to get shredded by LMGs. And they're forced to retreat. Hundred fifty points remaining for Eldad now. Order. 
Jackson moving up to fire on that Panther. All the shots on the frontal armor penetrating. Ooh, tried to use attack ground there, but it missed. That Sherman should probably move to the front lines. It's been fully repaired. Oh, nasty shot on those Panzer Fusiliers by that Sherman. Man, there goes the full squad. That Panther is blitzing to retaliate, though, and that Sherman is completely unsupport. What? That high explosive round just penetrated that Panther's frontal armor. I'm pretty sure the odds of that happening are like less than 10%. That was amazing. Uh, Jackson really wants to take out that Panther with the... It does his vet 3, but he can't afford to continue chasing, sadly. Paratroopers harassing territory on the left. Polak slowly taking control of the entire map. Only 75 points remaining for Eldad now, who is producing a second Panther because he doesn't have time to hold out for a King Tiger unless he can get a more, a much more secure hold on some area of the map. Paratroopers being called into counter. This push by those Obersoldaten while the uh, Sherman moves up to force them away. Panzer Shrek armed rifleman dealing damage to that Panther, but the bundle grenade takes out two models. The Panther is dealing heavy damage to the Sherman, so it has to for it's forced to back away. Panther may finish it off. Oh, it backs away a little too prematurely, and it's not able to. It's also utilizing Blitz to get out of range of that Jackson, but the paratroopers are going to give vision if that Jackson creeps up even a little bit more. He chooses not to, because there's a Raketan Warfare in range of support and he doesn't want to lose it. Oh, what is he doing with those riflemen? Don't lose that Shrek! Oh ho ho! The Jackson finishes him off, but he does lose the Panzer Shrek squad. That being said, now that that Panther is dead... Oh, there's, a, there's another Panther here! There's another Panther here, and his... Oh no, he just lost his Vet 3 Jackson! He lost his Vet 3 Jackson, and now there's nothing that can stop that Panther. One Vet 2 Sherman goes down! And another high explosive round just penetrated the frontal armor of a panther. I can't believe how that keeps on happening. That being said, all of Eldad's infantry is dead. It's all dead. All of Polak's tanks are dead. He's making a new Jackson now. 15 points remaining. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if uh, Eldad will be able to take the center victory point in time. It's critical that he force away these infantry and take control of that VP now. He doesn't really have time to waste on this. Riflemen are getting pushed away by this Panther and an Obersoldaten squad, but they do have an LMG doing what damage they can, taking heavy damage, may get killed. He retreats them at the last second. Grenade going out. Oh, perfectly placed grenade. Will he wipe the squad? He has to wipe this squad. The Panther is trying to prevent it desperately. One last paratrooper model does wipe out that Obersoldaten, and more paratrooper reinforcements arrive. And the clock is going to run out, and that will be the game. <laughs> oh, be nice, Eldad. Come on now. Nice play by Polak at the very end. Whoa. Whoa, what is this bad manners? I'm disappointed, Polak. Come on now. You should behave better than that, but... Well played by both players. I really enjoyed the game. I hope you did too. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.